All right, thank you, James, for uh, allowing me to present um, the Computers and Geosciences Journal, and uh, James is very active also as board member. So um, I think the topic of this meeting is, is also quite relevant to me. I'm, I'm personally working in a subsurf as a more of an engineering type application and decision making under uncertainty. So this is certainly very relevant. So let's talk a little bit about the journal Computers and Geosciences and, and the scope, uh, which is written here. Um, so we present original research uh, in the interface of computer science and the geosciences. So what that means is basically that uh, um, publications need to address uh, modern computer science paradigm, so we look for a considerable sophistication there. Um, when I started doing my research, I was uh, programming in Fortran 77. This was in 1988. So we are now way beyond this kind of uh, programming of sequential and procedural programming. And the journal also started a little bit like that. It's sort of, well, people made a couple of programs and let's make them that make that code available and then people could you know, use that code and it was all static and, and things like that. And, and I think over the years, we've seen a tremendous uh, growth in, in computer science and certainly uh, my research has become much more computer science uh, than I ever thought it would be. So these are some of the issues that uh, we deal with. As I said, considerable sophistication uh, we look for in computer science. I think this is a, a, a change that I made in the scope when I took over the journal in 2011, um, when the journal was still a little bit, well, we use computers to do something. Uh, as I said, uh, we're looking now for uh, several things. In particular, I'm very interested in software design, high performance computing, of course, computational methods, numerical modeling. Uh, we have a big section on artificial intelligence and soft computing, database systems, graphics, visualizations, uh, and the world wide web, uh, the internet of things. The other thing that's very important, and I don't have to, I think, uh, motivate you for that, is geosciences. Um, I've, when I studied engineering uh, back home, and this was in Belgium, uh, I thought it was all very boring you know, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and I wanted to do something natural, and I did mining engineering. And that's how I got to know about geophysics and geochemistry, and gosh, that was all much more interesting than engineering. So uh, I, I look for clear and explicit applications of geosciences as well. Sometimes we get uh, submissions that are sort of tangentially geosciences. Well, geosciences is an afterthought. Uh, and uh, this, is, this group is really, I think, one of the premier groups that we target for publication. So in, in that way, in both geosciences and computer science, we no longer do standard applications. So I use GIS to solve this problem. I wrote a Fortran code or I wrote a C++ code uh, to solve this and that problem. We do no longer do that. Um, we really look for new programming designs and uh, the kind of things that James has been uh, talking about as well, uh, sophisticated benchmark problems. Uh, I think this is also one of the things that I work on a lot because uh, same in my work in subsurface uh, reservoir, there are so many people doing so many things and there's no benchmark. And so as you said, you can always tailor your solution to your problem and then write a nice paper, but does it really solve anything? Uh, so these are uh, in, important things to note. Uh, we have a, a really uh, good team now, I would say. Um, most of the people here uh, I was able to attract uh, to the uh, journal. There's a new editor in chief just two weeks ago. Uh, so I don't have to deal with all 800 publications uh, any longer. So that's the good news. The other good news is that this editor is really a world-class leader uh, in geoinformatics, uh, Edzer Pivesma, who just uh, uh, you know was uh, became a member of the team, and he'd be looking more at the use of geographical information systems, uh, the World Wide Web, and, and things like that. He's also director of an institute in geoinformatics in uh, in Münster, in Germany. And as you notice from our editorial team, we have an extremely wide variety geographically as well as. Uh, people from various fields, uh, people from the industry, people from academia, people from NASA, government, etc. Uh, so there's uh, a lot of people on there. So we 
And as I took over the journal in 2011, uh, the, the journal was starting to pick up as an interesting journal. I think a lot of people in geosciences had started to discover computer science. Um, and uh, there was a problem a little bit with the management of the journal. It was still sort of uh, done by an editor-in-chief and the secretary and, uh, you know, Elsevier. Uh, of course now offers uh, very impressive services for us and manpower behind the journal uh, to allow us to do that. So uh, the speed, which is something that some of you are uh, you know, um, interested in as well, particularly when you're a student, you're doing your PhD, you want to get this paper out. Uh, I get those questions a lot. When is this going to get published? It's, well, let's first review it. Um, and But we are now very fast, I think, as you notice here, we went from 35 weeks in 2010 to six weeks uh, in terms of review speed. We are really a top journal in turnaround right now, so I'm very proud to have that. It doesn't come with a cut in the, the quality. Actually, the quality has dramatically, I find, Im improved, and it's not my doing, that is your doing. And so uh, the, uh, the impact factor has definitely increased. And we went from sort of middle of the road to now in the top 25% of 200 journals uh, in our field. So data and software, uh, this is something that's very dear to me as well. I, I work on software. I mean, this is my academic product to the industry that is using this. Uh, as well. So I created, uh, we had this static uploading of code on Elsevier website and then zip files and it was just a mess. Uh, and then people said, where is the file and, and the code doesn't work and this and that. So uh, we work uh, with a um, code repository, GitHub, some of you may be familiar with that, uh, where if authors want to make changes, I can give them access to the code repository, but of course, we keep track of the changes being made. So in other words, new publications, uh, new uh, code changes uh, may, will still reflect the old code, which is attached, of course, to the publication. We're also rethinking this, uh, and Edser has some really great ideas. Um, we want to make software more citable. We want to make data more citable. Because you know you spend a lot of time writing publications, but you also spend a lot of time working on data, and massaging the data and doing the data. I mean, this is you know 80 percent of it is sweat, basically. And how you got to this data set, the nice pictures you just showed and the videos, it's a lot of work. We all know that. And so we we are working on creating maybe a portion of the journal that we become a data portion, and a software citable portion. So. Uh, we are still thinking about that. We have to negotiate that with Elsevier. There are other organizations like NSF uh, and others who are working on that. So this is one of the new plans. Special issue issues, uh, and, and James already put that up uh, previously. Uh, here is that previous special issue that was published in 2012. Uh, it's it's one of the most popular special issues that we published in the last three years. The most cited special issue. Special issues are great. Uh, they basically have greater visibility, uh, greater impact, greater everything. Uh, and, and I think that's, uh, it's, it's very important to, uh, to, you know, to get that together. Um, in terms of publication time, it doesn't really matter. Uh, papers get reviewed, they get submitted to the guest editor, uh, chief editor makes decisions, uh, and as, as soon as the paper is, uh, paper is accepted, the paper is online. Right? And then after a while, as all the papers are in, they get grouped together and, and, and it becomes a, a, an issue on its own. Uh, the thing, of course, today is that uh, paper is going out of the window. I don't even get a paper copy of Computers and Geosciences. So this idea of issues, uh, it's sort of becoming a little bit irrelevant, but I think grouping it together and making it uh, something special is great because also it gets greater visibility on the website. Elsevier loves special issues and, and promotes those. Uh, and if special issues have great impact, it will go even further and promote them even further. So these are uh, things to remember. I just kind of copied and pasted a few keywords. I should have done a cool slide like James did at the beginning, now I realize. And I know there's all the kind of software to do that. Uh, but these are the sort of the keywords of the last special issue. And you notice there's a great amount of computer science and great amount of geoscience. And that is really uh, what we're looking for. 
So that's where I want to end. I'm here for the next two days. And if you have questions about submitting to the special issues, submitting to the journal, um, you know, uh, just come up and, uh, and feel free uh, to ask me questions. Um, and I do welcome very much a proposal. And the proposal will have to be sort of put together. The way it works is that there will be, have to be guest editors. And guest editors will have to come up with a proposed set of titles that we then go forward. And once I have those titles and the guest editors, then we can go set up and get started. Thank you.